Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah continue on in our study or our brief review of Umda uh, the book of Tahara in the second hadith wa nabi Hurairah radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yaqbal allahu salata ahadikum idha ahtada hatta yatawadda'u Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said Allah does not accept the prayer of any one of you if he has a hadith, if he has, if he breaks his wudu until he makes wudu. In this hadith of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this hadith is a foundation from the Sunnah of the Message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam relating to the condition of having tahara for salat. That one of the conditions for one's prayer is that they have tahara. That is a condition for your prayer. And this is the dalil. This is evidence from the sunnah. So this is a very important hadith for that reason. Uh, likewise, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, Ya yuladina amanu, ida kumtu mila salati, fagsulu wujuhukum, wa idiukum ila marafik, wa amsuhu bi ruusikum, wa arjulukum ila kaabain, ila kaabain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem in Surah Al Ma'ida, Subhana, he says, O you who believe, when you stand for prayer, then wash your faces and your hands to your elbows and wipe your heads and your uh, and, and clean your fe- your your feet to your ankles. So that is the evidence from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Quran uh, for uh, that one having a hadith, one breaking their violating tahara, that this is evidence that uh, one must have tahara in preparation for salat because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you in that ayat. He commanded the mu'mineen because he said, Ya yuladina amanu. O you who believe, if you, when you prepare for prayer, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding the believers when they pray that they need to wash for prayer. They need to be on tahara. And that's the shahid of the ayat. Some of the benefits of this hadith is, uh, first, is that the uh, actions, uh, that actions can either be accepted or or mardud, or rejected. So we learn that from this hadith because the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يقبل الله صلاة أهدكم That Allah does not accept the prayer of one of you who has hadith, who has broken his wudu, or, you know, has violated tahara until they make wudu. So that lets us know that, again, that a condition, uh, that, that actions, no matter what kind of actions, actions of worship can be accepted or rejected, depending on their meeting the conditions for ibadah or not. Another benefit of this hadith is that this hadith is also evidence that purification is a condition for prayer, as we mentioned. And that's for all prayer. All prayer, you must have uh, a wudu. You must have wudu. You must have tahara. Another benefit from this hadith is that tahara also breaks into, uh, or a hadith, the breaking or violating of the violation of tahara, or pur- purification, or impurities, they uh, are referred to, the ulama, they mention, in the Arabic language, they mention, uh, al-hadith huwa al-kharij min sabilain, min rih, o bol, o ga'it, wa ghayrihima. That hadith, what is referred to, as the Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith, لا يقبل الله صلاة أحدكم إذا أحدث Hadith here, the word hadith here, this refers to that which comes out of the two 
weighs basically out of the anus, a karmokamala, or out of the uh, private part. For the male, that's the penis, a karmokamala, and for the female, that is the uh, vagina. And so that which comes out of those, the two private parts from either passing gas, air, rih, or bowl, urine, urination, or ra'it, meaning a karmokamala, number two, as we say, or uh, defecation, or other than that. And that is what is called hadith. And then hadith divides into hadith al-akbar or hadith al-asghar. There is the major hadith and the minor hadith. The, the, so the major impurities and the minor impurities. The major hadith, the uh, major impurities requires that you make ghuzl. So, for example, akramakum Allah, if someone has, uh, you know, for a man, he ejects semen, or the woman, she has uh, an orgasm and releases fluid, then that is uh, considered hadith al-akbar, and that requires ghusl. It doesn't require wudu. So that's the major hadith. So the Prophet ﷺ was mentioning al-hadith here in the hadith, and this is in reference to hadith al-asgar, the minor hadith, when we're talking about wudu. And then the minor hadith is the other, you know, urination and uh, defecation and so forth, and passing gas. Akramakum Allah. Another benefit of this hadith, uh, or moving on to the next hadith, An Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, wa Abi Hurayrata, wa Aishata, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, qalu, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, waylu lal'iqab min al-nar. The Prophet, uh, 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 Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, wa Abi Huraira, wa Aisha, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, woe to the ankles from the fire, from the hellfire. This hadith, is a very important hadith because this is also related to tahara. It is showing us that this it's a foundation uh, of of tahara. And when 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 one makes wudu, is that they uh, there's an obligation to perfect the wudu, and the perfection of wudu and ghusl means that you are immersing your limbs in water to make sure. That they are, uh, that they are covered properly, so that way you don't miss a spot. Because the Prophet wasallam said this to some Sahaba, radiAllahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, who were making wudu, and then there was uh, observed on the ankles of one of them uh, that he had a dry patch. So the Prophet wasallam said, "Wailu lil'aqab min al-nar." Woe to the ankles uh, from the fire. Or woe to the heels from the fire. So this shows us the importance of uh, making a full wudu. So what we gain from this hadith, one of the benefits of this hadith is this hadith uh, shows us the permissibility and the khair uh, of the goodness of raising one's voice when delivering ilm. In raising one's voice, for delivering ilm, because the Prophet ﷺ was delivering ilm. He was teaching his sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, about how to make proper wudu, and giving them a stern warning to, hey, do not be uh, uh, careless with regards to your tahara. So this is a part of education. This was education from the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, and this is delivering of ilm. And... This shows the permissibility of raising one's voice during uh, uh, delivering knowledge. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us the importance uh, and is an example of changing the munkar, changing something that is sinful or something that's wrong, something that needs to be corrected by the tongue. And this was done by the Prophet wasallam, and he clarified that there is a the ruling and the punishment. He clarified the ruling and the punishment. That the ruling, that this is impermissible, it's not acceptable. And he said, woe to the ankles uh, 
to the uh, heels from the fire. So this is a stern admonition from the Prophet ﷺ to take care and make proper wudu, you know, cover the limbs, and uh, that there, he also mentioned the punishment, that, hey, if you don't do this correctly, you know, you, you can uh, uh, enter into the fire, you know, this can be, this is a punishable uh, thing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith is that uh, this hadith shows us the obligation to perfect one's wudu and clean their limbs properly, thoroughly. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us the obligation to wash the uh, the um, the the ankles and the uh, the heels to wash one's heels. Uh, uh, and be cautious of that because that's an easy spot to miss. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith also shows us the hirs or the vigilance of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een with regards to prayer and wanting to know the ahkam and wanting to come closer to Allah and wanting ilm and nafia, beneficial knowledge that would bring them closer to Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala and a last benefit of this hadith is it also illustrates that masiyah or sinfulness is a reason for the punishment of the fire and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from the hellfire wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad